Yeah, well, hey, I mean, you, you're talking about one-offs and power rankings. I mean, if you look at at least the wide receiver uh, uh, rankings and, and receiving yards and who's producing and who's not, the thing I wonder is, is the first two games, is this – can this be sustained? I mean, and like, look at this. Uh, Jameson Williams right now, uh, I don't know if you guys – I mean, come on, you, you check out uh, the receiving leaders right now in the NFL – Nico Collins is leading right now, 252 yards. Okay, and this is just a weird, weird list because uh, I, I would have never predicted that two games in, Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson are the only two on here that you typically see on this top 10 list. I mean, you have Nico Collins, Chris Godwin at two, J-Mo, Malik Neighbors, Justin Jefferson, Alec Pierce. Six shout out Rasheed Rice, Devonte Adams, Rashid Shahid has a hundred. He has as many yards as Devonte Adams, and then Debo Samuel. Like this is uh th- through through two games, JMO right now top three or t- excuse me tied for two in the NFL, fifty two yards, fifty three yards from being number one. Uh, and I know it's early. I get that it's early. A lot of football left to play. But you look at how Devonte Adams, like we know who he is, but Gardner Minshew, that offense is absolutely atrocious or atrocious. And then you look at uh, Justin Jefferson. I mean, he's good at ball. He's going to continue to ball out. Um, sure. But but having Kirk Cousins there, I think. I mean, the the guy. We say what you want about Kirk, but he knows how to get Justin Jefferson the football. I don't know. Like, go to this, Sam Darnold. And in, in Sam Darnold, yeah, but you KOC know, KOC yeah. does more importantly. Yeah, and that's and that's fair. Like Tyreek Hill, no Tua Tagovailoa, which I I know it stinks. I have him on my fantasy team. To no Ty- with Tyreek Hill, but you look at some of the guys that are like typically up there. It is kind of a weird year so far, and JMO being tied for second. I don't know if this is something like I know we talked about our our ex- expectations, like you know seven eight hundred yards, whatever it is. He's already what one third that one fourth there he's already yeah. uh, basically 20 percent there or 25 percent there a quarter there and it's two games like i don't i don't know what to make of this should i be excited i mean are we, i don't know because i, I, I I'm gonna be honest i'm gonna tell you guys something okay first week he played really well he was on my bench the second week i kept him on my fantasy bench i'm not gonna lie to you i kept him on my fantasy bench because i wasn't yeah. sure I'm too. starting him this week, boys. Like I'm starting the man this week. I don't know what to make of it. Over who? Um, who I think I have Jaden Reed, and uh, I just with, oh. with yeah, yeah, Malik Willis. On now he's projected eight eight point eight points. I got him on my team too. Yeah, but Bruce, I, go I, ahead. Yeah, I, I did a, a couple things real quick. One, this is only after two weeks, guys. So like, I'm not gonna get my what, what is the saying? Panties in a bunch. Um, over this, like, I'm not gonna. <laughs> like, Ooh. Um, I did Ooh. see a stat, or I heard a stat that it's like. Through the first two weeks of the NFL season, there's been like 50 less passing touchdowns, or or like like all like some insane stat in, since like years past in like the last like five six years. So like historically, everything is a low right now. So like these stats, so like you're gonna see so like Alec Pierce at six. That man probably has 400 more yards the rest of the season. Maybe not, but you see, what I'm, like, hey. I, I'm not, I'm not picking on your guy, Clancy. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm, right, just, I'm right. pulling it out. Like this is going to even itself that. out. And I do think, and I would like to, and, and Jeff, you brought this up yesterday. I had a phone call earlier today with a couple people in regards to this as well, and it's starting to get a little bit more uh, prevalent. Is the word I'm starting to use bigger words. I really enjoy relevant, them. relevant, whatever they were. I, I enjoy words, bigger words, <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Is it good? And and Jeff, you, I thought about it a lot for the a lot for the last twenty four hours. Is it good for the Lions' offense for JMO to be top ten in the NFL wide receivers? Like, uh, you know, you guys, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just like, no, that's the, the point. Is it's like Sam Laporte is not getting involved. Other guys, Amon Ra hasn't been like JMO has a lot of targets and like. Ben seems to be like this offense. They seem to be trying to force it to him because he's so good and trying to get him going where it's like, Hey, maybe like I would rather have a top five offense and spread this ball out a little bit more than have JMO go be an all pro wide receiver, a pro bowler and be a top 15 offense. That's just me. Like, and, and, and I'm not throwing shit guys. I mean, for the people hey, are Booner, like, Booner, before Booner, the people Booner. in the chat start going, Booner doesn't like J. No, I love J. No, but the yeah, last two weeks, the offense has been very bad. And I don't like, really. You see what I'm saying? 
I, I think on, that's not the winning formula. You'd rather see no. A, Amon Ra in the top five. You'd rather see David Montgomery leading the league in rushing or leading the league in rushing touchdowns. You want to see something that fits the formula of this offense that's been going back to their identity. We talked about it yesterday where it just looks like this offense is missing an identity. And I'm, again, I'm going to do the same thing that Booner is. Jamison Williams is not the identity of this offense, and that's okay. He's he's a very good player, but he should not be the focal point of this offense. If that's happening, the, the main pieces of this Detroit Lions offense are being shut down, I think, through the first two games, at least with Sam LaPorta. I know Amon Rod came out last week and had 10 catches for 100-plus yards, but the middle of the field has just been taken away. So that's why they're feeding it to JMO so much because they're going, okay, let's get the ball in the middle of the field, not there. Goff's trying to create a play after, not very mobile, so he's got to force the ball to JMO. And, I mean, that's a good option to have. But that's not the option that this Detroit Lions offense wants to be looking at consistently. Yeah, I think kind of what you said, Lucas, going back to the identity, getting the run game more involved and leading those type of stats would be more Lions-esque. But Sam Laporte has been a little banged up, obviously. They came out and Dan talked about that a little bit today. So he hasn't gotten fully worked into the offense. And then I honestly, last game, I don't think J-Mo was getting force-fed at all. I think it was more of St. Brown and kind of, trying to amend what happened in week one and trying to force it in too many situations to St. Brown. I think J-Mo was totally fine last week. And I think either way, if you would have ended up 2-0, and it really wouldn't have mattered. Like, we wouldn't even be talking about this. I think this is only a conversation because we're one and one about getting more people involved, to be honest. But guys, I think week, week by week, it's going to be like this with the right wide receivers as far as J-Mo and St. Brown and eventually Laporta goes. It's going to be people week by week. It might not be getting St. Brown involved every single week or forcing St. Brown. I think you're still going to have to continue to work the ball around like that. I think, like I said, they last game they were way they were forcing St. Brown way too much. But, way but too. you got to think, guys, J-Mo the last two weeks, again, this isn't me going at, at J-Mo. He's had 20 targets the last two weeks. He had 11 this last game, and, and he had five catches. One of the catches, 50 yards, and then the rest is 20, 24 yards off four. And then this isn't me being like – it's just like this offense has to get more fluid. Like you can't and, – and maybe it is uh, – they're forcing to – I mean, I threw 55 times. Like that should never happen. Dan said it on 97.1 today. Should never happen throwing 55 times. But – Jamo getting 11 targets when you like, hey, let's get this run game going. I think Amon Ra had like 14 or even more, like 15 plus targets. Like, hey, maybe take that down to 10 and and, and get Jamo down to seven and get this offense more fluid. Like, get more, like, get the more running, the run game going. Get like, how many t- targets does Sam Laporta have? We're talking about like, uh, Jamo didn't get that many targets. He had 11 targets. Sam Laporta, we're, we're saying he had three targets. Like, that's ridiculous, man. And like, half of them are like five, five, yards five times and Sam Laporta has three targets. That is ridiculous. That should never happen. Your offense, if you want to get this full offense rolling at a high level, a top five offense, you're not going to be able to throw it to JMO. And again, Coach Walk says it's not JMO. Not JMO's fault at all. This is Ben Johnson. And this is Jared Goff, like, figuring this thing out. But you can't just, like, we got to get this offense rolling, man. Yeah. I mean, I think Laporta's targets, like I said, will increase week by week. I think the bigger problem was ha- run, running the ball like nine times going into halftime that game. Obviously, we already kind of brought up the point throwing 50 times is not the Lions' identity, but running the ball only nine times going into halftime with the best offensive line in the league and the best running back duo in the league and what this team has built themselves around is running the ball and then kind of opening up the pass game after that, that's disgraceful. There's no way the Lions should run the ball nine times or whatever the hell it was going into halftime. Yeah, I mean, and I have an answer uh, because I brought this up yesterday when we had this conversation that I it, we talked about how the offense looks a little more vertical and you know, but again, they they're in the red zone seven times, so I, that was more just like a hey, let's have a conversation, talk about it. I think it all serious. Like my answer to that, Booner, and I don't hate your point. Like I, I actually I get what you're, and I have an explanation. I think it's and it's what Mike said. I think. Base Jamo's getting the targets he should be getting, but he's also taking on Sam Laporta's targets. So he's getting the targets he should be getting and Sam Laporta's targets that he typically would get. Like like Sam Laporta should be getting what four to four to six more targets. I think those are shooting right to Jamo, given that Sam Laporta has not looked healthy, and that's what mm-hmm. Dan talked about. He something is off with Sam Laporta. I don't know, and maybe that's because he's been out with training camp. He's been dealing with that hamstring that he came back from late. 
So he's kind of getting worked. He's getting his, his conditioning right. I don't know, getting used to being back on the field. There could be a lot of reasons. I think when we revisit this in about six weeks, it'll be more balanced. We'll see mm -hmm. We'll see more of that balance, more of that fluidity you're talking about. I, I just think it's that simple. Jamo's getting – he's asked to do a lot more given Sam Laporta's slow start. Now, is it the right move to make this offense a little more vertical? I don't know. And, and I, you know, I, I think the run game should be the focus, which I, I'm sure next week they'll correct. Like the run game, set up play action, and get this offense just kind of more fluid as the term you use, which I actually like that term, more fluid. It, it make it look like it looked like last year. I know it takes time. And Dan Campbell actually talked about it, guys. And I want to show you guys this quote he had. Um, Cause, and I'll ask you the question as well about the offense, getting back on track. He said, uh, um, this is here. I'll put this on screen for you guys. Uh, Will Birchfield, shout out to him. 97 one covers the lions. He says, Dan Campbell on offense, a slow start. I'm not shocked. I'll be honest. I wouldn't be shocked if we're not cooking by the time we get to the bye. Sometimes it takes a minute. Great offenses we've had. It's not always perfect early. So I'm not rattled or shaken by this at all. Uh, so Dan Campbell basically saying, Hey, we might not get this thing right by the bye week. And that's okay. It takes a minute. And, you know, I, yeah. I, and Some he, bumps he, on he, the path, Boone. I mean, I mean this, this is negative. I'm, I'm trying, what's, what's something that goes with the, uh, a, a J? What, like, like, not joyful. What's the opposite of joyful that starts with a J? Uh, boom, that's, that's a very specific request. On the I don't know. Like right on the spot. I don't like the tone out of out of Jeff. He he's supposed to be a janitor or a, a, a help me on the Booner path. The negativity and the oh, I don't don't like that. Listen, this team's going to struggle. Football teams struggle every unless you're in college football and you're Georgia or Alabama, you're gonna struggle. Like, come on, man. Like, I said it last night. Like, or yesterday. Well, yeah, with the show last night. If you lose versus the Cardinals, right, you're one and two. Figure it out and move on. Like this is the beginning of the season. I don't care about the first eight games. This is where you try and get the things, like get your momentum rolling a little bit. Fix all the small things. All those bumps that you're talking about, Klotzy, Those potholes. Guess what? We live in Michigan. We fill those in, and we learn and we get better. Yeah, one you took know? me out last weekend. Shit's and that's all, yeah. Well, for you, yeah, that's tough. And and you know what? What did you do? You have a new tire, right? A little adversity, and you're a good to go. Rim. Tire around. was fine. New rim, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're good to go. That's all it is, man. Like again, if they lose Sunday, which knock on wood, they're not going to. But if they do, and, and like if it takes until the bye week, that's four games. Like four games in a season, especially at the beginning, doesn't matter. Like obviously for seeding, it does. But you want to be playing your best football come end of December, January, and February. That's when it matters, man. So, like, the people that were overreacting over the last three days, jog on, go somewhere else, turn, go to a different band, yeah, bandwagon, and we'll talk <laughs> to you later. Because come January, this football team is going to be buzzing. They're going to figure out all of these nicks and crannies and these errors that they've had. The <laughs> offense is going to be a top five in the NFL. Defense will be top ten. And they'll be right back in Super Bowl favorites. It's one of the best teams in football. Like, the, look at the Chiefs. Look at the the Ravens. Like, teams are going to figure it out. It, it's not that big of a deal.